All right, today we will be discussing lessons from the Great Depression. Uh, our focus is what have we learned? How has this Great Depression influenced our markets and institutions today? What laws and regulations have been enacted? Um, recently with the 2007 recession, there was evidence that credit rating agencies were rating bonds that they shouldn't have just to keep doing business. Now this is a vital enterprise to our financial system, yet there's no oversight. There's nobody monitoring this conflict of interest. Um, as a result, there's still work to be done. Uh, and today, our project is done by myself, John Malone, Cassie Ortiz, and Brent Morris. Uh, intro. Uh, the Great Depression of 1929 was the biggest economic downturn in American history. Uh, between Black Friday and Black Tuesday, a collective 14 billion in investment losses were gone virtually overnight. Um, and as a result, the unemployment rate went from 3% to 25%, leaving a quarter of the American population jobless. Uh, the economy would not recover until World War II, which took about 10 to 15 years later. And these jobs did come back as a result of manufacturing for the war. Um, but the bigger picture shows that it caused the US government to reevaluate the efficiency of its systems. If such a big crash could occur, due to a lack of regulation, what steps need to take, be taken to prevent this? As I mentioned, the 2000 recession is an example of this. It was bordering on a depression, but thanks to Fed intervention, we may have avoided another great depression. Um, and the bigger question, again, is how can you and I ensure financial institutions act in the best interest of the public? Um, there's various ways, which we'll get into in this slideshow. Um, the main one, of course, is Board of Directors. Board of Directors represent the public. Uh, proxy votes given to them allow them influence to try and act on the behalf of the public. The Great Depression and its causes. So the Great Depression started in 1929 and lasted about 10 years until it ended approximately 1939. It was the deepest and longest lasting economic downturn in the history of the Western industrialized world. It originated in the US, but it had a global effect. And for an idea of the global impact, during the, Great De the, during the Great Depression, the worldwide GDP dropped 15%, and while the 2000, and during the 2008-2009 Great Recession, it dropped less than 1%, so significantly less. Negative effects of the Depression lasted until World War II, when the economy was stimulated again. And the Great Depression is now commonly used as an example of how the world's economy can decline. The causes for the collapse were primarily a decrease in income and employment. Uh, consumer spending decreased as a result and banks went bankrupt and people could not get back on their feet. Another uh, effect was debt deflation, which was the liquidation of debt and distress selling, which would then decrease profit and net value of businesses, which would then decrease confidence and cause consumers and investors and banks to hoard their money. So there's less money in the economy. Also, the start of the Great Depression was marked by the stock market crash of October 1929, also called Black Tuesday. Stock prices were raised to the point that they were unjustifiably high. And uh, as a result, investors sold millions of stocks that day and the market collapsed. Uh, their stocks became worthless and millions of uh, investors lost all their money. In fact, through the 1920s and 1930s and the effect of it on society, markets, and individuals. The effect on society was huge and poverty was far more prominent. Uh, cities and towns could no longer afford uh, infrastructure or construction, so there was a visual uh, effect from the Great Depression. Uh, consumers' confidence was decimated so they would hold on to their money and they wouldn't put it back into the economy. There was a rapid rise in crime rates and higher education was too expensive for most Americans. So there were less people going to school and there was a, an increase in crime. So it was really a rough time during America. Regarding the markets, there was significantly less money in the economy because people had less money and they were more likely to hold on to it than they were to invest. Uh, 
There was a breakdown of international trade as a result of the global effect and also as a result of the decrease in incomes and people's desire to hold on to their money more. However, gold became incredibly valued because it was not inflated or anything by the Great Depression. It still had its valuable. It still has it still had its value and it was able to be traded. The effect on individuals was they would use credit to purchase things and as a result become even further in debt. So it was a cyclical debt. And they would be more likely to hold on to their money so they wouldn't be spending it. So I'm going to be discussing how the United States, as well as the rest of the world, was able to recover from the Great Depression. When FDR took over from Herbert Hoover, on his inauguration night, he enacted the Emergency Banking Act of 1933. What the Emergency Banking Act of 1933 did was it had all the banks across the country shut down for a minimum of four days. This was done to help revamp the banking system as a whole and make the banks economically sound once again. The point of this was to gain back investor confidence and trust in investing their money in the banks to help get the money supply flowing again. One of the other big things that he did was the Civilian uh, Conservation Corporation, also known as the Triple C. This created jobs for uh, jobless men of ages 18 to 25 in camps across the country where they would make $30 per month. And the jobs consisted of beautification processes such as highway rebuilding, bridges, uh, cleaning, jobs, things like that. Then this is also similar to the Works Progress Administration, which was similar to the CCC in the respect that it created more beautification jobs across the country. A couple million jobs were created to do more highway rebuilding, uh, forest cleaning, things like that. And also the Ag Agricultural Adjustment Act was huge for farmers because at, the, at first what it was, was it was able to have farmers they, they were given a subsidy by the government to grow less crops because the surplus was too much and they were going bad. And then in 1936, that was adjusted to them using less land overall for their crops and they were given more money. This, was it, this allowed them to put more money into the economy and allowed them to have more money to spend. Another big thing was World War II. World War II was huge for the revamp of the industrial economy for the United States because the United States turned into a weapon factory and they were at first were selling to both sides they were selling to the axes and the allies but eventually they got in trouble and were only able to start selling to the allies but these created so many jobs and creating factories creating more jobs brought in so much revenue and really boosted the economy as a whole Um, the big question here was, despite all the trials and tribulations, was society able to create a sustainable society for the future economically? I believe that the answer is yes, largely through most of the reforms of FDR in the banking system, many of which are still implemented in today's current banking system. Society realized that something that was very important was tight regulation, so, so now the Fed meets twice a year to discuss inflation rates, whether they should be up the same or down, and just to monitor the stock market through the SEC and things like that. Because without close monitoring, mod monitoring, the economy can collapse just like that. Um, also, the Social Security Act was huge because we went from 53,000 in 1937 also to almost 10 million in the present day of retirees having a source of income to spend in, in the economy. The housing market also thrived until the, um, the housing crisis of 2008 and now it's fully recovered again as, you, as we can see through the Fed raising inflation twice in 2016. Uh, the Dow Jones also cracked 20,000 for the first time ever in this past year so the economy is at an all time high. And the 12 regional banks are still all standing tall, receiving help from the Fed and the various member banks to ensure a positive money supply throughout the economy. And the six year upheaval between 1933 and 1938 proved to be one of the most influential times in American history. So, uh, some regulations and institutions that were put in place during the Great Depression to help uh, the economy come out of it. So, in 1933, after the Emergency Banking Act, we had the 1933 Banking Act which set up the FDIC, which ensured deposits up to $2,500. And um, it separated investment banks and commercial banks from working together to share information, which in part was a cause of the uh, stock market collapse. 
and also the beginnings of the Federal Open Market Committee was set up to um, prevent another recession. So, and then in 1933, we had the Securities Act as well. It mandated companies to have all the relevant documents, so like financial statements, a prospectus, a description of the security, and it required companies to have uh, that information available to potential investors so that investors would know what um, they're getting themselves into so they could make a wise uh, decision. So yeah. Um, the second new deal started in uh, 1935 with the National Labor Relations Act. So this uh, allowed workers to unionize, um, to uh, engage in collective bargaining for better working conditions, better pay and going on strike if necessary. Then the Fair Labor Standards Act in 1938, it uh, established a 40 hour work week with a uh, minimum wage in place, time and a half in place, and it helped prevent uh, child labor. And then in 1935, we see the Social Security Act, which was the beginning of the Social Security Administration, which uh, aimed to provide, at first it was aimed to provide for, um, aimed to provide aid for the elderly, the unemployed, and children, but now it has since has expanded to include retirement benefits, health insurance, uh, survivor benefits, as well as uh, other safety nets to prevent people from falling into poverty. So some lessons for the future, um, don't let speculation drive stock prices because that leads to, um, it could create a bubble and that's never good because you can have another uh, stock market crash. Um, keep big banks in check so they uh, don't become too big to fail as we've seen in the recession in 2007. Um, the Fed and the government should also try to work together to ensure that the economy doesn't collapse and that uh, the economy stays stable. And then should continue regulating and promote ethical business practices so that um, with the oversight of the SEC so that the economy can stay safe and stable. And in conclusion, the Great Depression brought, brought light to serious issues that uh, with the markets and the institutions of the time, but uh, thankfully uh, we, we can learn from our mistakes and we won't commit, commit the same errors. Uh, the Banking Act in 1933 helped alleviate a lot of those uh, conflicts of interest to prevent market discrepancies and prevent unethical business practices. But uh, today, the duty on each individual is to hold these institutions accountable to their mandates and ensure that they don't abuse their power. How can financial institutions be held accountable? Um, mainly, they're structured to keep the economy in check, but they're run by humans, and humans make errors and are subject to greed and the like. And as a result, they can benefit from abuse of their power. Um, for example, a Fed regulator may accept a bribe to overlook conflicts of interest. Or, uh, to give an example from the Great Recession, credit rating agencies such as Moody's or S&P will give junk bonds higher ratings in order to continue making money. This was the case with mortgage-backed securities when they would put AA and AAA ratings in these bonds that were really nothing more than ninja loans. The question is how do we prevent this? Uh, most commonly is through a board of directors. Uh, this board of director, directors is composed of non-employees, people who do not have a vested interest in the company uh, and can represent the public. And they're appointed based on their ability to do so. Um, the Fed, for example, is composed of nine board members, three of which are, are members from other banks. It's partly composed of members of the community, as well as people completely unattached to the company who are genuinely just looking out for the best interest of the public.